Hello, hello, and thank you everybody for joining us for another wonderful Hub 101. We are so happy to be back. As you all know, my name is Janelle Martin. I'm Marty Moore. As some of you may be familiar with ACT already, ACT is a backbone agency for collective impact serving a network of nonprofit, faith-based, public, and private member organizations. As part of ACT, the Austin Community Hub is a safe space to intentionally and thoughtfully engage disconnected families and individuals in collaboration with our member base to securely connect community members to holistic resources, such as career counseling, housing, and much, much more. Part of these services include informing our community members about the different organizations we work with and the great resources and programs that they have to offer. So we created Hub 101s. This month, we are joined by Rebuilding Together, a national nonprofit with a local Chicago chapter whose mission is to repair homes, revitalize communities, and rebuild lives. And how they're going to live out this mission is what they're going to talk to us about today. Yes, yes. We will begin with a presentation from two of Rebuilding Together's programming team, uh, Randy and their pro Randy, their program coordinator, and Lisa, their program director. So if you have any questions during or after the presentation, feel free to drop them inside of the chat and we will do our best to answer them. And now with that being said, the floor is all yours. Awesome. Um <clears throat> thank you, uh, Janelle. Thank you, Amani. Let me uh share my screen real quick here. Um and does that look good? Okay, beautiful. Um, so great. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, my name's Randy. I am a program coordinator here at Rebuilding Together. Um, and I'm joined by Lisa, who is our program director. Um, just first of all, I wanna thank Austin coming together for having us. Uh, it's really excited uh, to you know kind of have this partnership with them. Um, and uh, continue to build, you know, stronger relationships in the Austin community. Um, so I can't actually see the Facebook chat right now, but I'd love to um, hear if uh, uh, if anybody uh, has heard of Rebuilding Together. I know Janelle and Amani can see the chat. If you've heard of Rebuilding Together, go ahead and throw one in the chat. Um, if you've heard of us before seeing uh, the flyer for this Hub 101. Um, and if you haven't heard of us, that's okay. Uh, you're in good company with myself. Uh, I hadn't heard of Rebuilding Together either until I started working here last summer. Um, but hey, if you have heard of us, you might know that we've actually been in the community for quite a while. Um, so Rebuilding Together, we are a licensed 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we're actually part of a national network of uh, over 120 affiliates across the country. Um, our TMC in Chicago, as we call it, Rebuilding Together Metro Chicago, uh, we began back in 1991. And so I believe if my count is correct, this is our uh, 32nd program year um, in the city and in the county. And in that time, we've done about 2,000 home repairs, and we've served over uh, 350 different community centers in some capacity or another, including, you know, contractor work, getting a bunch of volunteers out to do painting and landscaping, pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, so what are we about here at Rebuilding Together? Uh, we kind of distill it into three big ideas. Our mission is repairing homes, revitalizing communities, and restoring lives. Uh, and for me, uh, this means a few kind of really important things about how we do our work. Uh, first of all, it means that we focus on the health and the safety of the homeowner in our work. Um, it means helping our clients live comfortably in accessible homes that are well suited to their needs. Uh, I think one of the things that I've enjoyed the most about this job is getting to know the homeowners who work with. And of course, that includes their stories, that includes their lives, um, and it includes what they need done in their home to live those lives as fully and joyfully and, and safely and happily as they can. We work with our homeowners to understand their priorities. Um, so again, to me, it's really important that we see our job as a partnership with the homeowners in our program. 
um, that our staff and our volunteers, we all work together with our homeowners to find solutions that work well for them and that we have a, a kind of that dialogue about uh, what your priorities are and, and how we can meet those. And then that revitalizing communities part, uh, it points to our strategy of concentrating our work in small geographic areas and in particular neighborhoods. So each year, the, the way we do our work is we usually stay in a few smaller neighborhoods because we believe um, that when we can work in partnership with organizations like Austin coming together in great neighborhoods like Austin, that's what allows our efforts to really be um, multiplied to not just doing individual home repairs, but actually helping to catalyze improvements on blocks and on neighborhoods um, with other partners in the community who are doing the same. So that's what we're, we're all about, repairing homes, revitalizing communities, restoring lives. Um, and this is a little bit of what it looks like. Um, you get a little montage here, um, or collage rather, of our, uh, some of our homeowners, some of our great volunteers um, doing everything from, you know, huge community centers and warehouses to working in individual homes. Um, it's been really fun getting to see just the variety of things uh, that we're involved in here at RT. So let me give you real quick, just kind of the broad look, the 10,000 foot view uh, of rebuilding together Metro Chicago. Um, at RT, eligible applicants, they own and occupy their homes. Uh, it's typically single family homes and two flats that we work in in our uh, home repair program. Um, there have been exceptions, but that is uh, typically most of where we're working. The money, the volunteers, and the materials for our home repair program are provided by a variety of different sponsor groups. So that can include anybody from a business uh, to a faith-based organization or congregation to even we just have groups of like-minded friends who want to pool their skills and their resources together to do some important home repair work. Um, but all of the money and the volunteers, the materials, the resources for our home repair program are provided by our sponsors. Any work that is done on, uh, on your home would be a gift, um, not a lien, not a loan. There will never be a lien against your home. Uh, you would never take a loan out for our services and rebuilding together would never ask you for money for our program. Um, and all home repair work, again, that means it's free. Uh, I know that's a word we love. And uh, certainly uh, you would work together with us and with our sponsors to build the right scope of repairs. Um, but our services monetarily are free. So that's a little bit of the, um, the high up view of rebuilding together. Now I want to talk just for a few minutes, um, kind of get into some of what y'all are facing in the community. Uh, what are the obstacles that Austin homeowners run into? First of all, um, we can't talk about this without talking about the prohibitive cost of home repairs. And we can't talk about home repairs and revitalizing communities without touching on the historic factors in Chicago, right? And I won't by any means do a deep dive on the history today. Um, but we all know that all sorts of policies and practices that have been enacted throughout our city's history um, have led to the historic disinvestment of particular neighborhoods like Austin. Um, and this, of course, causes both communal harm and individual challenges. And, um, and those ramifications are, are uh, seen in our work doing home repairs. Um, we, uh, we see a high rate of cost burdened home ownership. Um, that cost burden is a technical term that means um, folks who spend more than 30% of their income on housing costs. Across the country, uh, a quarter of US residents are cost burdened, uh, every one in four. Um, and in Chicago, that number is higher. Uh, we see a lot of our homeowners that are vulnerable to home repair um, fraud, uh, to scams. Um, that's extremely common and it's it's a tragic thing that happens over and over again um, that can really mess up with someone's uh, a life and livelihood. And then of course we know there's a challenge to performing maintenance on a fixed income. Um, a lot of our clients are senior citizens who are living on social security or who are living on a pension. Um, and when you're living on a fixed income, uh, we know things come up, things break, uh, houses uh, get old and and Things get wonky and, and uh, when you're on a fixed income, it can, it can be hard uh, to perform those surprise repairs and that maintenance. 
And all of these factors uh, have even been emphasized and exacerbated more in this COVID, post-COVID world that we live in. Um, I know there's that phrase that we have all heard way too much the past few years, supply chain, supply chain, supply chain. Uh, and unfortunately, that's hit our work as well. Um, that has hit uh, the home repair and construction industry. Um, so simply the materials needed to do home repairs these days are more expensive than they've ever been. Um, we know that a lot of our homeowners uh, have really in a hard way experienced the isolating effects of the pandemic, right? I think we all experienced in one way or another what it was like to not be able to see our neighbors or our families. And that isolation can be hard on anybody. And it's even harder when uh, you know you have really significant repairs that you need to get done. And when you have other health challenges that, you, that need you um, to stay you know, isolated even longer, when it wasn't even safe to bring a contractor or a friend in, into your home to help. And then of course, there's just a host of other cost of living pressures. Um, we know that transportation costs are higher than they've been. Uh, we know that it can hurt to go to the grocery store and uh, see the bill that comes up uh, when we get into the checkout line. So just all these cost of living pressures, um, they have an effect on home ownership too, on home repair, on the work that we're doing. And then I think almost everyone has this desire to age in place, right? So that's something that's really important to us as well. Um, one place that starts with our work is fall prevention. Uh, falls are actually the leading cause of death and injury in senior citizens. And, and as it so happens, nearly two thirds of them uh, actually happen in the home, not away from the home. So at Rebuilding Together, we take fall prevention very seriously. Uh, not only because it's a life safety measure, but really because we want our clients to have peace of mind, um, comfort, safety, joy in their home. And that includes other safety and accessibility modifications as well. So things like grab bars, handrails. Um, I, I don't know if you'll meet two people who are more excited about talking about handrails than Lisa and I. Um, smoke detectors, uh, doorbells, all these things that maybe... Um, folks who are younger, who are uh, able-bodied, who, who don't have trouble moving around, don't think about, but that are critical um, to being safe and comfortable. Uh, we know that uh, folks wanna age in place, which means greater independence. Um, it makes sense that everybody wants to stay in their home. We love our homes, right? Uh, they're an important thing to us. And of course, uh, we circle back to the history uh, because aging in place and staying in your home longer is connected to building generational wealth. Homeowners who can maintain ownership of their home have the opportunity to build generational wealth with their kids, with their grandchildren, um, which we know is essential to the security of a family and we know is essential to the, the vitality of a neighborhood, of a community, right? Um, and even beyond all these, uh, you know, physical and financial factors and statistics, frankly, when it comes down to it, it can be really hard and stressful to maintain a safe and a comfortable home uh, when, uh, when faced with all these challenges. There is an immense emotional burden that can come into this too. And, and really what we wanna do at Rebuilding Together, um, we wanna step into these challenges with our neighbors um, because at the end of the day, everybody deserves to live in a safe home. Everybody deserves to live in a comfortable home. So that's, that's a little bit of, of how I see the work that we do. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, proverbially pass it off for a moment to a homeowner uh, that we worked with this past year. Um, she was an Englewood homeowner of ours, um, and she was just a gem of a human being, and she put it better uh, than I ever could. Um, so I'm going to just read this quote in full um, and let us soak in these words. Um, she said that it was a very respectful and professional team that came out that the program came at a time when I needed to be picked up the most. I was in a deep depression. It wasn't by choice that some of our homes fell as a result of what we had to go through. And she said that what Rebuilding Together has offered is the opportunity to dust ourselves off, to pick ourselves up, and to go on a little longer. Um, and, and, and this rings true. She said, we're more than deserving of the opportunity that's been given to us. You're my people. I know your struggles. Um, so we know that so many of our neighbors experience challenges to warmth and safety in their homes due to factors outside of their control, like this homeowner said. 
Um, and for us, it's, it's simply not acceptable that that remains the case. And that's why we do what we do. So that's, that's the what and uh, the why. What about the how? Uh, how do we go about this rebuilding work? Um, and again, we love groups of three. So uh, the three kind of guideposts for us are warm, safe, and dry. Um, that's what guides pretty much all of our home repair work in our context in Chicago. Um, this means everything from servicing furnaces through our Warm the Metro program so that folks can safely heat up their homes through um, the frigid Chicago winters. It can mean patching up leaks to keep water in the places where it's supposed to be and away from where it's not supposed to be. Um, and it can mean those critically and potentially life-saving installs like the grab bars, like the handrails, like the carbon monoxide detectors. Um, so warm, safe, and dry, it, it's those among other things. And that's the drum we beat over and over because we believe it's that important. Uh, we're really lucky to work with a wildly wide array of volunteers. Um, so we have, first of all, a lot of unskilled volunteers to join us. Um, and there's nothing to be ashamed of about that unskilled uh, title. I would certainly fit in uh, with that. Um, anybody who knows how to pick up a paintbrush um, and dip it in a pail and start painting, they can join us. Um, this includes things like corporate sponsors, nonprofit and community groups, congregations and faith-based organizations, um, and really anybody who wants to lend a hand. And then on the other side of that, we also have these incredible partnerships uh, with skilled labor unions. Uh, so you see, it looks like uh, some of our electricians from this past year um, doing some work on uh, some lighting in a basement. Um, we have developed tons of unique relationships with uh, skilled laborers um, across Chicago and Cook County. Uh, we work with carpenters, with electricians, with plumbers, with sheet metal workers, with painter tapers. Um, and these are women and men across these guilds who provide really robust technical skills um, that really enable us to do a lot of the work that would otherwise be impossible or inaccessible. Um, so these, these partnerships with our skilled labor unions are immeasurably valuable for us. So I'll, I'll play a short video here for us just to give you a little bit of an idea um, of what these uh, partnerships look like. Um, it was a uh, video put together by our partners at Powering Chicago, um, a great group of electricians that we get to work with every year. Um, so I will zip my mouth for a minute and uh, let us watch this. Oh, can you hear? Maybe not. Give me one sec. I will reboot this up. Okay, let's try one more time. To them to have a light, there we go. it changes everything for them. We have a skill that none of people have and we want to donate it, you know, help people. When I first started, it used to be called Christmas in April. So we have qualified union carpenters, electricians, plumbers, painters going to these homes, making their own assessments and making safe repairs. Now it's called Rebuilding Together. On behalf of the Contractors Association, I want to thank everybody for coming out today, donating your time, and you have them safe out there. Our training and our skills are the best in the nation. We make it work, we make it safe, and we do it right the first time. We're going to give a great thing to some of these uh, constituents the City of Chicago members that they can't do for themselves and we bring the trade workforce in, we put it on your shoulders and it gets done and you do change people's lives today. We work together. A lot of the times they know what needs to be done. They have no clue where to go and get it done. So that's number one. Number two is the financial aspect of it, right? So a lot of the stuff is not affordable. It's not easy to call a, a qualified, certified electrical contractor to come out and repair something that they've never had before. We're all people deep down, if that's what we are. And we want to go out and show the community that we're your neighbors, we're your family, we're your friends. That's who we are. Yeah, we got over 100 volunteers today. We just get them all together and get help from everyone. The combination of the people from Powering Chicago, the IBEW electricians, 
and the Electrical Contractors Association of Chicago are here to help the low-income seniors of Blue Island up to code and to make them warm, safe, and dry. You guys go out and you safe off anything that doesn't look safe first, and then you start making those fundamental repairs. We're tradesmen. A lot of these people don't have that same opportunity on who to call to come out and fix this, fix that. We go in there, we already know what to do. We know how to address it. We know how to make it safe. We know how to fix it. We know how to make it better. You I'll pause it there. Um, yeah, that's a little bit uh, from our electricians. Um, I've learned a lot just by hanging out around these guys. I didn't know squat about um, electric work before then or any of these trades really. Um, but there was that one quote in the middle, I think, I think hit, hit it on the head there was that, um, these are, uh, our volunteers that just want to be, um, neighbors in their neighborhoods. Um, and it's such a privilege for us to work with folks like these, um, with our homeowners to do these really special things. This was all from an event just this past April, um, in Englewood and in Blue Island. Um, and, uh, yeah, those, those partnerships are invaluable to what we do. Okay, um, so a little bit about RTMC's uh, programs. I want to get a little more in the nitty gritty to kind of help you understand um, the specifics of our different programs, what we do. Um, so there's four, four different programs I'll highlight today. The first one is what you just saw in the video. Um, it's called National Rebuilding Day. It's our longest running program. It's, uh, it's where Rebuilding Together got its start. Uh, National Rebuilding Day, it happens on the last Saturday in April every year. It's this big one day wild event um, where a bunch of volunteers uh, come into one neighborhood um, and do uh, all sorts of repairs just in one day. Every year we do in one Chicago neighborhood and uh, one Cook County suburb. Um, and again, yeah, that's our longest running program is National Rebuilding Day. And please, if you have particular questions about the, any of these questions, um, don't be shy about uh, um, putting those in the chat. I want to make sure that we clarify anything that's maybe not clear now. Um, our second program is called uh, our Give Back Days. And, and this is what we call our days where we get to work with our community centers, our nonprofit partners, um, uh, facilities uh, throughout Chicago and Cook County that are in need of repair, improvement, modification. What I like to say is that our partners are, are really good at doing what they do, whether that's, you know, Austin coming together, um, who's great at, at connecting you to the right resources. Um, so our partners are good at doing what they do, and we're really good at home repair, at um, building repair, at construction. So if we can come together um, to uh, share our resources and our skills, uh, it makes us all stronger. Right. Um, so our give back days are usually uh, big volunteer events uh, with sponsored groups um, doing a mix of skilled and unskilled work. And uh, it's over 350 give back days that we've actually completed in our 30 years here, uh, basically in every corner of Chicago and Cook County that, uh, that you could think of. Our third program is called uh, Warm the Metro. Um, this is a pretty new program. It actually happened as a response to COVID um, when uh, COVID caused us to kind of step back and consider, okay, what does our home repair work look like uh, during the pandemic? Um, so it birthed this really beautiful partnership with the sheet metal uh, workers, Local 73, um, where they've been able to service and repair furnaces uh, for our homeowners to make sure that homes stay warm uh, and furnaces stay operable throughout the winter. Uh, so that began in 2021, and that's a program that uh, we're expanding and really excited to uh, keep rolling with. And then our fourth program, um, this is the one that I want to highlight a little more today. It's called uh, Safe at Home. Um, again, this is one that Lisa and I are really passionate about. And what our Safe at Home program is, uh, it's low cost, high impact home modifications. They're all aimed at fall prevention, at safety, at accessibility. Um, so that's grab bars, handrails, uh, raised toilet seats, handheld shower heads. That's things like smoke detectors and fire extinguishers. That's making sure that you've got um, bright, easy to see address numbers on your home in the case of an emergency. It's making sure that your front door locks well um, and, and unlocks well. And that's making sure that you got a doorbell that works. Uh, so these repairs and more are all a part of our safe at home program. Um, and we'll circle back to that in just a moment. 
But first, uh, let's just talk briefly about getting involved with RTMC. Um, I, I think on this call, we probably have a good mix of um, folks who are hoping to apply and folks who are hoping to volunteer with us. Uh, and I want to try and uh, answer any of the questions or thoughts you might have if you're on either end there or both ends. Um, so first, how do I apply? Um, it's really, really simple. We try to keep our process as simple as we can because um, that makes it easier for everybody, right? So first, um, you're going to call this number 312-201-1188. Um, and maybe Janelle Amani, if, if one of y'all could throw that in the chat, um, that would be fantastic. Thanks. So you'll call our office there. Um, we'll uh, have a short conversation with you. And we'll basically describe your contact info. info and then we'll send you an application uh, via mail or email, whatever your preference is. Um, we can do either easily. Uh, we'll send you an application out. You're going to fill it out and return it to us. Uh, the application only takes about 15 minutes to fill out. It includes some basic information as well as a little section about the uh, specific home repairs uh, that are your priority. Then if you're eligible, um, and eligibility is based on uh, HUD income guidelines and then that home ownership status and uh, home homeowner occupied status, so if you're eligible, we would reach out to schedule an appointment with you. And then I just wanna emphasize again that your repair priorities, your thoughts are important to us. Uh, and that is an essential part uh, of our whole process. So um, our exciting announcement uh, this afternoon is that the Safe at Home program is coming to Austin this summer. Um, so we'll be doing all sorts of those safe at home repairs uh, in Austin homes this summer and this fall. Um, so if you're an Austin homeowner and if you've applied uh, for rebuilding together before, or if you never have, now is a great time to do so. Um, uh, we, we highly encourage you yeah, to reach out uh, for an application so we can get that, that ball rolling for you. Um, and I want to note, because uh, this is a question we get asked a lot, uh, acceptance uh, into the Safe at Home program does not in any way disqualify you from future home repair programs. Okay, so that's the application side of things. Um, what if I want to volunteer with RTMC? Um, we've got a few different ways to do that as well. So you've heard me mention this word sponsor a few times. Um, and there's kind of a, a few ways we can do this. We have corporate and group sponsorship opportunities. Um, if you are interested in, in sponsoring a volunteer home repair project, for instance, through our National Rebuilding Day, or if you're interested in doing um, a give back day, um, you can email uh, this address right here, uh, L Miranda, uh, that's uh, my partner Lisa at Rebuilding Together dash chai .com. I know our uh, email addresses are a bit of a mouthful, um, but we can go ahead and throw those in the chat for you guys as well so you can copy them down. Um, so if you have a group uh, that you're interested in sponsoring an event with, uh, please reach out to us. And if you're an individual um, that's not part of a specific group, but you're um, really passionate about home repairs, uh, uh, you're handy, um, you want to get involved too, I want to show you that uh, we're really looking forward to building out more opportunities for individual volunteers to work with uh, rebuilding together. Um, so you can email this one here, uh, volunteer at rebuildingtogether-shy.com, and we'll add you to our volunteer interest list uh, so that when we have opportunities, uh, we'll be able to reach out to you directly. And then if you're a community partner um, uh, that and you're on this call, uh, I uh, just would really encourage you and ask you to reach out to us. Um, if you're offering a service that our clients from, could benefit from, that they could use, we would love to partner with you. Um, again, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that we're stronger together when we work together, right? Um, so you can email my email here, rwestergaard at rebuildingtogether-chai.com um, about any community partnership opportunities. Um, so, uh, let's talk briefly about one specific volunteer opportunity that I'm really excited about. It's called Make a Difference Day. Uh, Make a Difference Day is actually a national thing that all sorts of organizations participate with. And it happens on the last Saturday in October every year. Um, 
Make a Difference Day for us looks like this. Uh, we usually like to go out in a community garden, um, get our hands dirty, put our gloves on, do some landscaping work, uh, do some weeding, throwing down mulch, anything that needs to happen to uh, get a garden ready for the winter um, so that it's ready to run again in the next spring. Um, so we usually base ourselves in the garden and then do a day full of safe at home repairs, work together. Uh, and it's a really great opportunity to jump in and see what rebuilding together is about. So if you've never heard of us, um, or if you have heard of us and, and you've been thinking about volunteering, um, please come out and join us on Make a Difference Day. Uh, we have a blast. We bring out you know, coffee, pastries. Uh, we serve you lunch. Um, it is truly one of my favorite days of the year. Um, there's kind of something magical about the energy of uh, Make a Difference Day. Um, so again, if you have questions about that at the end of the presentation, uh, please let me know and I'll be happy to clarify anything. Again, you can email that same volunteer at rebuildingtogether-chi to um, ask about volunteering with us on Make a Difference Day and, and we can get you rolling there. So that is about all that I have to say. Um, I'm gonna play one more video for us. Um, this is from a wonderful homeowner of ours that we actually uh, had the chance to work with last year. Um, she is a long time Austin resident. Um, so she's our neighbor, she's your neighbor. Um, and uh, she got her little 15 minutes of fame as well. She got to uh, be on ABC and do a great uh, little story with them. Um, so I'm going to play that and again, let her words speak for herself because um, she put it really well. On the steps. In just a few short weeks, Rosetta Scott's house will finally become a home again. This has been a godsend. Scott has lived in the house she bought with her husband more than 40 years ago. But the 78 year old widow says upkeep became difficult after losing him to COVID and his income during the pandemic. Her adult son, a veteran who suffered a traumatic brain injury while in the service, can do little to help. I took out loans to have these things fixed, and I, I couldn't afford it anymore. Badly in need of repairs, the house is getting a much needed makeover thanks to a partnership between Rebuild Together Metro Chicago and the home improvement giant Lowe's. The effort is a part of a mission to repair homes and revitalize communities. We're creating generational wealth because those homes are remaining in the community and their families. Repairs made through the home repair program cost homeowners nothing. They just have to apply. Work at the Scott House doesn't just include fixing the roof or a gut renovation of the basement, but making it easier for the senior to get around in her own home. We're also going to uh, perform some make safe repairs. Uh, so we'll be installing handrails and grab bars. Now the work here at Miss Scott's house should last about five weeks. It's just one of six houses in the neighborhood, this Austin neighborhood that the group is working on. Today, volunteers from Lowe's are getting the demo done before contractors come in to get the construction work done. To tell you the truth, I, I enjoy it myself, and when I talk to the volunteers that came out today, this, they're passionate about it too. As is Rosetta Scott, who says the repairs not only give her peace of mind, but much more. If my husband was here, he'd just be smiling all over the place, you know. I know it's going to be a good year and a good Thanksgiving. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago. You don't need to do that. You don't need to subscribe to them. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take a big gulp of water and then um, open the floor uh, to questions and pass it back off steps. to uh, Janelle and Imani. Hello, thank you so much for that. That was fabulous. Great presentation. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, okay, so we do have a, quite a few questions that have been coming in. Um, so I will let Imani go ahead and get us started. Yes, we go to some questions from chat first. Okay. How much work have you done in Austin in the last? Uh, I'm trying to make out the question. I'm sorry. How much work have you done in Austin in years previous to, to this one? I'm guessing that's the question. Sure, I can talk a little bit about that. So we've been in Chicago for over 30 years now. This will be our 32nd program year. And we have always, we always work on the south or west side of Chicago. So about half of that time, we've devoted our efforts to the west side. So in addition to Austin, we've worked in Lawndale, um, West Garfield Park, um, 
those those would be real areas of concentration for us. Um, the pandemic put a little uh, uh, pause in things, but we have have been at, in Austin for the last three years for our Make a Difference Day efforts, as well as some of our um, kind of uh, just housing work that has been ongoing, like the Lowe's project that you just saw. Um, you know that that's that Austin is a community that we love to be in, that we love to partner with, and we've probably done. I would estimate, you know, probably 200 homes in our in the times that we've we've been uh, since we've been working in Chicago. Thanks, Lisa. Um, let's go to the next question. Okay. okay. Someone wants to know: Do you all do basement remodeling? So. It, it's difficult to comment on specific home repairs just because we are so based in partnering with our, our homeowners to see what they their needs are. Um, we have done those sort of repairs in the past. Typically that we, uh, you know, that we, we kind of focus on rebuilding more than remodeling just because it is so safety oriented for us. So for instance, you know, the kind of basement repairs we'd be doing is if you know that uh, things like making sure that there's good lighting down there, that if there is water infiltration, looking at those sorts of issues, any sort of unsafe, uh, you know, electrical or plumbing issues, leaks, um, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, that there are times that we have done, like the, the video with Ms. Scott, that we really were, in, in one sense, remodeling a, a basement in that video. Um, but that's pretty untraditional work for us. And part of that reason was that the, the veteran that, that was mentioned was really that was his living space. Um, and so we were building that out for a veteran. So it was a very targeted grant that wanted to work with a veteran and, and the Scott family was just so wonderful. So um, the basement remodels are a little bit unusual for us, but we're very individualized. So depending on what, um, what specific needs a homeowner have that I, I hate to rule anything be, uh, obviously in or obviously out as far as a repair. Okay. Um, and can you can you tell us a little bit more about what was able to make that partnership work and if that's something that Rebuilding Together might have again in the future? I know National Rebuilding Day is sometimes something that people can get involved with for that as well. So, um, we are constantly, our team is constantly reaching out to different sponsors uh, to, to, to uh, be able to do more for the community. Lowe's is one of those partners that was featured in that in that particular video that they came to us with an opportunity where they wanted to make a significant investment in uh, four homes. In, in, in the, and so we were able to partner them with the Austin community. Um, they were particularly interested in, in, in veteran homeowners and seniors. So those are the homes that we were able to select for them. Um, the sorts of repairs that we're able to do is always you know that I, I like to you know everybody's seen that home repair program where they say move that bus unfortunately that's not our program <laughs> I wish it was I wish that we could do those real you know move everybody to Disneyland for two weeks and do everything in their house um, but you know that we we work very hard to do high quality repairs safety repairs um, you know and sometimes we have very generous sponsors that we're able to do some really incredible things in the home um, but it really is just dependent on the funding that, that we get each year exactly what we can can bring to the community. Nice. Thank you. And, we, you know, as those partnerships reach out, we will happily get you connected to them. But if anybody on this call knows of anybody who might be interested. Absolutely. <laughs> um, it does look like we've got a few more questions. Um, and I kind of want to start off with the around applications, but I want to start off for those who have already applied and maybe they had applied a while ago. Um, especially considering that some, you know, a lot of the work, the safe at home program is going to be focused in Austin this summer for any re Austin residents who had applied before, would their applications still be in rebuilding together's database or do they need to reapply for this. It should still be in our database. And normally what happens when we return to a community that has been over 12 months since they've applied, that we would call them just to just to do kind of a phone interview to make sure that everything is still correct regarding their application, that the income is, is the same, that the people living in the home are the same, and the basic repairs that they're looking for is the same. Um, if there is, you know, the people can definitely reach out to our office and just to check that if their application is, um, 
is that we do have it on file and that it is up to date. Um, we usually what we'll do is it will you will use that application and then uh, kind of certify it um, okay. going into our next year. Okay, okay. But so it sounds like best bet is just have them call you just to double check and then we can kind of go from there. Absolutely. Or, and we will also okay. be reach, we're starting to reach out to schedules, so sort of the, the process of once you've applied for our program, you'll get a phone uh, call, just follow up just to go over and make sure to, to just to fill in any, if there was any questions regarding your application and to schedule an interview. What that is, is two people will come out to your home. Um, usually you'll see either Randy or I and someone else <laughs> to come out and just sort of complete what we call complete your application, which that means that you would show us some documentation that shows who does live there, what your income is that you do are the homeowner and at the same time our partner would be looking at some of the repairs that could be made in your house um we we tip did we do so they'll be you know they'll they may ask questions regarding you know if you're having issues getting in and out of the tub or what, what would you like a grab bar and really inspecting your home also to see um what your physical environment can can take that you know that we don't want to put a grab bar on a wall that is not stable so there may be some you know so that may direct you to a different program first before we'd be able to put in um the grab bars um but so so that's sort of the process that your application goes through and then once you've had that interview then we try to match you with a sponsor or match you with a program so for the those that have applied in austin right now that the first program that we'd be trying to match you with is our make a difference day program our safe at home program but you would also be eligible for any other programming that we have in fact kind of going through the safe at home program is a, is a wonderful way for us to get to know you a little bit and get to know your home and know other needs that you may have that a lot of our applicants you know sort of the safe at home is sort of the first step and then we we look at you for other programming as well and what if, if you have what what does that timeline kind of look like uh, roughly so we do take applications on a rolling basis, especially for our safe at home program. And as we have funding, then we perform repairs. But we are looking to do, you know, if you're applying now or if you have already applied, we're sort of re kind of reactivating the, the phone interview and, and interview process that uh, make a difference day itself is at the last Saturday, the fourth Saturday, I should say, in October, October 28th. So we'll be doing so it, on that day and leading up to that day, we will be doing the bulk of safe for home repairs. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, we 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 don't we're a small nonprofit so we don't really have the we, we're not an emergency or an urgent repair program at this point we're kind of we would love to you know to be able to expand that work and that's something that we're you know we're working on in our strategic plan to be able to make those um changes sooner for people just because if you need a grab bar in your bathroom it'd be nice to have it tomorrow <laughs> instead of in october um but but right now we're kind of limited a little bit just to our by our capacity and kind of they do funnel into the existing um opportunities that we have. Um, and I just briefly, I just really want to take it back to the beginning of the application process. Can you tell us, do you have any requirements that people do need to meet, such as income? Do they have to be a certain age? What does what the application process look like to get even considered? So you do have to live in Cook County. You do have to own and occupy your home. So what that means is that you mean you could have a mortgage, you could be paying off your home, but you you are the homeowner and you do live there. Um, we do give preference to seniors, people uh, with disabilities, and people um, raising young children, especially raising young children alone, whether that's a grandma or a mom or a dad. Um, the, the, those are our that we the the typical client for us is a senior often a senior woman who may have you know lived in their home for 40 years um but now are having trouble just you know keeping up with you know the the their needs in the home are different than they were 40 years ago or that those just the deferred maintenance and, and needing of repairs so we can come in and help with that there's no age requirement and the income guidelines is is we we use depending on the grant sources that we have so some of the grants have different stipulations about exactly who we can serve but typically 50 percent ami or 80 percent ami which is area media median income um, and if you have a question regarding whether or not your your income would um would fall within that you could you can google it it's just the hud guidelines but you can also call our office and let us it's, it's a kind of a, a scale based on how many people uh are living in your home and if and if you see that it looks like you're on maybe the, the edge of that um we still encourage you absolutely to apply um if you have a question about it 
And I have a question. What, what if the property that I own and occupy is like a two flat or three flat? Does that still qualify or does it act, have to be an actual house? So we do work in a lot of two flats. And the way that it works with our granting structure is typically we work in the homeowner owned and occupied unit and common areas. So for instance, if you, you know, you, the homeowner lives on the first floor, but they rent the second floor, even if it's to a family member where they're not, it's a family building, they're not really receiving money rent, um, it is still considered not the homeowner occupied unit. So um, we have had instances in the past of two flats where, for instance, like maybe two sisters own the building together, they're co-owners, and then mm -hmm. each, we would have each floor apply separately, the okay. first floor and the second floor could each apply to the program and receive repairs. Thanks. And kind of like a second part of that, what if you have an elderly, you know, grandparent, parent who can't necessarily do the application on their own? Can somebody complete it for them? Or Absolutely. okay. Yeah. The, 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 it's nice if they can sign it, but if 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 they if okay. you have a proxy or you're you know, they're there, they're, as long as they live there and you're the caretaker, um, you know, it, that that's absolutely fine. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Um, and it, it looks like we've got a couple other Facebook questions. So anybody, please, we've got plenty of time. If you have any questions at all, feel free to toss them in there. Um, but one of the next ones we've got is with so much fraud um, going on right now and, um, you know, a lot of things that are going around that, with, especially with some of the seniors, do you have a list of maybe if you're not able to complete any of the work or if it, if this family needs extensive work, do you have a list of electricians, porch repair, plumbers, any like contractors that you feel comfortable working with or referring to? Unfortunately, we don't have a great list that way. And it's primarily because a lot of the contractors that we work with are, you know, that they're, they're not they're looking for larger scale jobs. Um, and then also a lot of our volunteers, like when Randy talked about, you know, our, our volunteers from the, the, our union volunteers, that they, they, um, they mostly are doing corporate, their, their day to day job is, you know, they're putting in the electricity in some a building downtown and in, in Chicago that they don't do residential repairs. Typically, um, the things that I would do would recommend as far as you know, because you're right that fraud is everywhere and anybody that knocks on your door and says if you give me 50 bucks I'll fix your roof or 500 bucks and I'll fix your roof don't use them. <laughs> that, that, that is, that, that's not the right, the right way. But I, I would recommend definitely working with your alderman's office. Other, you know, I don't know if um, ACT does anything around that as far as just, you know, it may have a, or going to things like the Better Business Bureau, just looking them up. Do they have a business license? Does it, what, it, what, are, what are the, what are, you know, even going on Yelp or Angie's List, things like that. Um, you know, it's also, I mean, it's, you know, in this community, in, in any community, I always like to see, you know, if I see, look down my block and someone is getting their roof done, you know, knock on, you know, call your neighbor and say, did they do a good job? You know, because yeah. I mean, sometimes it is nice to get those hyper local um, tradespeople just because they like, you know, they, you know, they, they like to work in your neighborhood, you know, that they're trying to build a, a business there. But um, Randy, do you have any other resources that way? As far as actual like business referrals, no. Um, but I, I would mention that if you um, apply for a program and if you're talking with us on the, talking with us on the phone or we um, come out and see you at your home and you have been a victim of home repair fraud, like please let us know um, because we have that's not something we handle, but we have partners um, that do that exact thing. You know, working with folks who have been victims of home repair fraud. So let us know so that we can, you know, kind of point you in the right direction. The one that comes to mind right now is um, Legal Aid Chicago. Um, they're, you know, a nonprofit law firm um, that does um, does exactly that kind of work. Um, so that, that's what comes to mind to me. And that's to kind of touch on both of those here at the Austin Community Hub, to second Rand, um, Randy's statement, if you need connected to legal resources, um, for any fraud that has happened, feel free to reach out to us. We um, And Lisa, to kind of like second a little bit what you said, we don't hold a list of local contractors 
and those kinds of resources ourselves, but we do hold lists of programs and such that we can look at getting you connected to. And there are contractors and so, like local contractors that we are familiar with. Um, and we can look at some of these other program at like home repair programmatic partners as well to see if they can get you connected to a list that they might have. Too nice. And some more questions. Uh, I like to just go back, kind of focus on the actual repairs that you that you all do provide. And uh, let's see. So someone wants to know. I know you mentioned uh, the heating uh, installations in the home. Uh, do you all provide central central air conditioning as well? If someone wants that installed. That is not uh, the 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 war, the warm of the metro is mostly clean and checks of existing mm -hmm. systems. Um, you know, I think that central air is some that that's an, a, a line of, of repairs that we would very much like to get into just, you know, yeah, and, and for, you know, climate change is real, <laughs> you know, that 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 that, you know, 20, 30 years ago, thinking about having not having air conditioning seemed to be a luxury. I don't, I think we're heading into a time period where that's no longer true, that that's yeah. just how you are able to live in your home in the summer. Um, I think that there's a lot of um, grants sort of being developed around that work, pilot programs. I mean, that's something that we are looking at in, in the future. We don't tech, we don't uh, right now have something in that space. Um, I encourage you, you know, I always encourage, I, I like to say to apply for everything and see who gets there first uh, you know if you haven't applied to CETA yet the um you know the energy efficiency definitely do that you know I, just another plug for for the ACT team that uh that you know that that that, that keeping put into that hub is I mean I, I think they really keep a pulse on what um opportunities are coming into the neighborhood but yeah I I think that you know five years from now that that will be business we do we just got to get there all right. Oh, sorry. Another question just came in, and I actually have a couple about floor leveling. Uh, is is that a service that you all provide as well? So floor leveling, it 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 a little bit depends. I mean, we've definitely done. I'm not sure if this person is talking about. Um, Perhaps that they 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 have a, a family member that is in a wheelchair that is having difficulty getting into different rooms in the house. Uh, we've definitely done some of that work, um, you know, or just removing, or if it just you know physical uh, mobility issues like removing thresholds. Um, it, yes, that we have done that work in the past. I mean, obviously that's that's a that's a that's a bigger project and a, and a more long term project, just because in order to level the floors, you have to have you look around and everything in your house is not got, got to be not on the floor so and for some time to be able to do that so I mean it's a it's a it's a it's a bigger repair um, it's typically that we more than you know leveling all to one level that we would more look at uh, just because of the nature of our program that we'd look more at um, you know removing thresholds um, and especially in you know if it is a case of a, a, you know someone who is in a wheelchair to make sure that they can get to their bedroom to their bathroom to the kitchen you know just those those real you know being able to to get throughout their home. The sh short answer, yes. Long answer is it would take a longer time. Yes, <laughs> it's a, it's a bigger repair, yeah. um, and completely understandable. And it sounds like it it can vary from each situation. Right. No. And depending on what that leveling is, you know, that also, I mean, we've that we're able to, you know, if it's if that leveling is really like, I don't know if it's a wheelchair related or just, you know, that they have some trip hazards in a piece mm -hmm. of flooring that we may be able, may, may not be able to level the entire house. But we know in the, if those trip hazards, you know, in the kitchen, you have, you know, tile that is coming up or, or, you know, we could definitely look at those sorts of repairs. We have another question about somebody who it's kind of a twofold um in terms of volunteering so they're they're saying they're interested in volunteering but they're asking if i volunteer for some of your projects can i also have volunteers assist me with some of the small projects on um in my home such as um like siding on my garage 
So yes, some of our volunteers are, are former recipients. Some of them are future recipients, just because okay. you know that they're you know that right now they may be able to do these the, make these repairs for themselves, but in the future they will not. They may not be able to. So definitely, we 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 love and encourage uh, people to participate on both sides of our our programming. Um, so yes, definitely being a volunteer would not would not make it so you couldn't receive repairs yourself. And then it looks like we have someone who is interested in have you in in some of the locations across Chicago that you have been you had mentioned that you've been on both south and west sides. Um, have you been in the Humboldt Park area slash do you know when the next time you might be able to do more projects in that area. So yep, that is an area we have worked on in in the past okay. i don't know specifically we have we have it depends on our programming we're always very funding. Um, uh, <laughs> You know, if, if there was a funder in Humble Park that came to us tomorrow and said, we'd like to give you money to do repair work in Humble Park, we'd say yes. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, so, so it could be as soon as that, but also okay. that just some of our programming as we travel through the city um, that we, I know that we've, we've done give back days in community centers there very recently. Housing work, I think that's been a little bit longer, but um, they definitely, that definitely is an area that we are interested in. Okay. And I do know with regard to the, you know, safety accessibility modification kind of area, um, there's there's other groups that are interested and it seems investing in doing that kind of work specifically on the west side. Um, like I think of like Rush Hospital, for example, groups like that, um, that uh, would include areas like Humble Park, North Lawndale, Austin. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. Um, we and there, there are also we we are familiar with a couple other programs. So if for some reason, you're not able to connect with Rebuilding Together. There are a lot of organizations that do SARFs, which is the small accessible repairs for seniors, um, and there are orgs across the city of Chicago who are capable of assisting with that as well. Okay. Next question. Yes. Next question. Okay. All right. So someone says they, they need their house winterized. It's a stucco a home and they don't believe it that they have installation throughout. So is, is they, are, do you see typical projects like this or is it something that you all help with? So kind of going back to that apply to everyone I that that specific repair I would really say CETA might be your your best and quickest opportunity to have that work done um we have we we do do insulation at times as part of our menu of home repairs but often it's more like in an attic like just laying down insulation but to really that blown in if you feel like you're you know if you if you touch your wall and it's cold it you most likely just don't have insulation in your walls you need to have that blown in and that's that's something that CETA does a great job with I would really I would reach out to them and I would like likewise refer you to the um, Chicago Bungalow Association as well um, they they also run a weatherization program and contrary to what the name applies uh, they also work in you know two flats not just bungalows <laughs> <laughs> they may need a name change. <laughs> also, or at least Randy, an and. Yes. And Randy with the Google over there. Thank you. <laughs> I had to fact check myself, but. Yeah. Um. It's so again, we're coming to that time of the the um, presentation. If you've got any questions, concerns, please feel free to start um, putting those in the chat as we'll be getting. A little bit closer to the last one here in a minute, but um, you had mentioned earlier when we were talking about like siding on garage and some of the small repairs that you can do. Does that does it have to be attached to the house, or if someone is looking to maybe get like a lock on their gate fixed and things like that, kit or like things in the backyard that are smaller fixes, but maybe going to help with mobility and such, is that something you can do? Yes, is, is that's a short answer. Um, yeah. We do definitely do focus on the interior of the home that that just because that that is where the but but you know being able to get in into your house, being able to get out of your house, you know having a a clear path to your car which may be in the garage and you may be you know and if you can't open that door or secure your garage, I mean that's obviously um, things that that we are looking at as well. Um, primarily interior and safety safety. Um, focus though. 
Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And okay. Do you have any courses on maintaining safe homes for first time home buyers? You know, that the, the, the short answer for that one is unfortunately no, but that is an, a line of businesses that we're also very interested in. Um, the, one of our partners in Inglewood, Rage, um, Residents of uh, Rage, Residents Association Greater Inglewood, they do a education series that is primarily for homeowners, people that are looking to buy a home for the first time, but they touch on a lot of those issues. And we've talked to them a few times just about how we might be able to, you know, come in and, um, you know, know when once you have that home how how do you maintain it you know maybe that you you've got the home and now you're like oh my goodness I didn't realize that this is something I'm going to need to do every year or should I be doing this every year um that's a space that we'd also like to move into um you know I think I think that that's I, th I think that that it, it's a lot of work to own your own home and keep it keep it up mm -hmm. and keep it comfortable for yourself and that's something that, that we are interested in but we do not currently have a program do you do you know of anybody who might or of like any good resources, you know, such as like, is there a YouTube channel or something for anybody who's looking just to kind of know general things to maintain their home? Is there a good resource you have to to direct people to? I, I can see Randy Googling right now. So I bet he's going to come up with something better than what I'm going to say off the cuff. On. <laughs> but but uh, but and that's something we can definitely circle back to. I mean, I think that I, you know, if you're looking to do an actual repair project at your house, that I think that like some of our big box stores like uh, Lowe's and Home Depot, they do a nice job of both, you know, saying, you know, these are the materials you're going to need, having a video to, to, to refer to. I mean, I think that's always that that, that can be a, a great uh, resource. Um, I think that just, you know, Googling, you know, how, how do I, you know, what, what, how often should I change my furnace filter or, you know, look, and, and also I don't want to give too much, you know, specific advice just because if you, you know, you should look at what you have, what the furnace filter that works in my furnace may be very different than yours and, you know, all of that. Um, but, but um, yeah, I think that that's, that's my main thoughts on that one, I think. The, the one that comes to mind to me, um, and this is, again, pretty specific to the fall prevention safety accessibility arena. Um, I know the CDC, um, they have a program called STEADY. It's an acronym for something because, you know, they love their acronyms. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, STEADY. Uh, but they have all sorts of different checklists, um, uh, resources for fall prevention for safety accessibility modifications, um, things that you could implement in your home um, to make your home safer, and then also, you know, ways of moving about navigating um, being in your home that are safer and more comfortable. Um, so that's at least one uh, resource I could think of. Uh, and I, I have some of those brochures as well that I'd be happy to share with y'all um, so that you can have those on the ready as well. So thank you, Randy. Yes, please. Um, and for anybody watching, any resources that Rebuilding Together is capable of giving to us here at Austin Coming Together, we will make sure you get them as well. In fact, we'll we'll send out a recording of this to everyone who is registered so you've got access to it. It will remain available on our um, our Facebook and YouTube pages. So if you want to you know, rewatch certain parts of it, you're welcome to. And then again, anything that Randy and Lisa send over to us for resources, we will happily connect you all with as well. Um, I do want to do a quick shout out in terms of responding to our last question about like ma home maintenance programs. It looks like we've got NHS um, tuning in on the Facebook as well, and it sounds like they do have some of those programs as well. Um, so happy to get you connected there. Thank you all for joining us. Um, and yeah, and just to continue a reminder, if there are any resources you can get connected to or would like connect with us here at ACT and we will get you so rebuilding together and anybody else we can. Oh, but any other last minute questions we want to toss out there? Uh, just for clarification for people listening. Um, so when, when getting the repairs, you all cover the upfront costs or is it a situation where uh, it's a reimbursement? It is absolutely free. 
it's not a loan, it's not a lien, there's no down payment, there's no, you know, you, you, we pay it first, then you had to pay us back. It is absolutely free. All of our home repairs, especially related to the Safe at Home program, to our National Rebuilding Day, Day program, to our Give Back Day program, to any of those, you know, those the current home repairs that we have existing in the city, all of those are absolutely free to the homeowner. I, I actually have a question. Um, kind of similar to the, to the two flat question. What if I'm an owner occupier of a mixed use property? So what if I have a storefront that, I, that I'm renting out and I stay on top or vice versa? How, how does that work? So that is an unusual setup for us, other than we have done homes that perhaps, you know, run a, a daycare within their home. So I would assume it'd be very similar for as far as our, our rules for that, as long as you own the own own the building and that you live on a floor of it, I think that that would fold within our requirements. I mean, that would be something I want to look at individually, but we've definitely worked with homes that, you know, they have, it's a two flat, they use their first floor as a, as a daycare facility, a home, a home daycare. Um, uh, and and we've been able to 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 do homes in, in, of that nature. So I think I think that that would probably likely be very similar. I think that is it for right now. Um, and like I said, if if you want um, to get reconnected with um, rebuilding together, if you want to rewatch this video please feel free to. We will have in our YouTube and Facebook pages, but I think that's it for right now. Um, so I just want to pause real quick and do a huge thank you to Rebuilding Together for both your incredible presentation. Um, round of applause, round of applause <laughs> for your incredible presentation and then sitting here and going through all of these questions with us. Um, we greatly appreciate you and the work that you do and are really excited about the um, program here in Austin for all summer long. Any residents who are watching, if you are interested in getting connected to that program, um, we are going to continue to pop toss up Rebuilding Together's phone number in this chat. But again, um, reaching out to them is one of the best bets or to get contacted, but otherwise you can connect with us here at ACT and we will ensure that you are able to communicate with them in some way, shape or form. Um, does anybody, Amani, do you have any last minute? Uh, no, it was, it was great. Um, great presentation. I, I hope everybody's listening is able to get connected and and get, get what you guys needed. I know it's, Austin is a beautiful place. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to see a lot of homes getting repaired soon. So I'm excited. I'm excited. That's great. Thank you guys. And I'll, I'll um, reiterate, maybe this doesn't need to be said, but if you're calling us during business hours, Monday through Friday, um, that's the best way to get in touch with us. And odds are we pretty much always have somebody at the phone um, to answer. So don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. And voicemails, yay, nay. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. We'll get back to you. Just, and thank you. I just want to thank you, uh, you guys so much for giving us this opportunity. Yeah. We really appreciate you being able to get the word out that we, we're really, we love to be in the Austin community. We're, we're glad to be back there again this year. And, you know, so seeing some old friends on the blocks that we're, we're going to be seeing some new, uh, you know, reach out. Some of you may know neighbors that have already reserved, re, re, you know, received our services. I, I recommend, you know, talk to them what it was like. It was Did we do a good job? What, what could, you know, what, what, what made that a great experience for them? you know reach out to your alderman and we've worked with Talia Fierro's ward a lot Emma Witz's Emma Mitz's ward a lot they're very familiar with us so just you know just kind of to follow up on what you know when people were talking about you know housing scams or you know I, I appreciate people who do their due diligence I wouldn't let anybody into my house without knowing who they are and what they're about and you know I mean I mean we we appreciate ACT bringing us together with you in this way but but you know we want you to be comfortable from the beginning. And shout out to y'all. You guys are doing just incredible work in Austin too. So thank you. It wouldn't be able to be done without the partnership of all of our incredible organizations. So um, that is really it for today. So again, huge thank you to Rebuilding Together. Thank you all to you Austin residents 
for viewing and being part of this. Wouldn't happen without you. And our next Hub 101 will be July 8th. Yes. Yes. Um, not July 8th, the following week. So July 13th. I have my apologies. July 13th. Um, and we will send you all that information as well. Coming up, we will be partnering with Westside Forward, and they're going to tell us all about their business accelerator and one of their new incredible programs that they've got coming up um, called JI2. So super pumped for that. Thank you again, Rebuilding Together, and we will see you all in July. See you next month.